Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Jen. Today I'm going to teach you how to calculate your calories and your macros to determine your maintenance calories and then your fat loss calories. If you're a woman who has a hard time understanding what macros are or even where to begin in terms of calculating your macros, this is the page to be because I'm going to explain this to you in the simplest and easiest way. If you've tried calorie calculators before or you've tried tracking apps that have given you a calorie and a macro calculation, but they weren't quite working for you, maybe you found that you weren't losing weight or you were still very hungry or you just weren't happy with the results after you lost the weight. You may also have PTSD from using them because they were so restrictive in terms of the calories and the macro intake and you want something that's more sustainable. If that sounds like you, like this video and subscribe to this channel so that I can teach you how to do just that so you can get lean, defined, and strong without feeling depressed in the process. When it comes to calculating your calories and your macros, these are not the only variables that you need. You also need to take into consideration the uniqueness and the individualities of the person. Many individuals as they get older still hold on to features or aspects with their metabolism that they developed when they were younger. The easiest way that I can explain this is that somebody who ran across country and somebody who played football were both very active individuals when they were younger, but this shaped their metabolism in different ways due to their metabolic conditioning and their training for these sports. An example of this would be that a cross-country runner has typically very low body fat percent, but also low body mass in terms of muscle mass. And individuals who played football may have more muscle mass due to weight training, but they typically have a higher body fat percent. Both of these individuals were active throughout their younger years. They may have had practice four, five, six times a week, but their practices look very different and their training is very different. Therefore, their metabolisms that they developed during that time is very different. And these metabolisms don't just disappear. They carry into their future years into their future age. Now, these individuals have different habits and lifestyles as they grow older than they did when they were younger. They could actually increase their performance, they could decrease their performance, they could pick up healthier habits, or they could pick up worse habits. And it's not just a simple age, weight, sex, height, activity level, body fat percent that is necessary in order to determine their calories as these individuals are very different. For this reason, I want to make the calorie calculation and the macro calculation very unique to the individual that comes in to me with my one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I'm going to explain that to you and how I would calculate that now. The easiest and most evidence-based way to determine someone's calories is by taking averages of their calorie intake on a weekly basis. And through this, we can figure out what their body weight is based off of their average calories and their activity level. So the first step of calculating your calories is to track your food. Now you're going to track your food for four to seven days, and when you track your food over those days, you're not going to change anything about the way that you eat. You're just going to eat like you normally do, you're going to train like you normally do, you're going to take as many steps as you normally do, but you're also going to track your daily weight. Now the first step of this is to understand what is your average weight. Your average weight is going to be your daily weight. So you're going to take each daily weight and you're going to add them up. So day one, day two, day three, day four, etc. You're going to add up that total daily weight into one number and then you're going to divide by how many days that you tracked for. So you may have tracked your daily weight for four days, or you may have tracked your daily weight for seven days. The best way to determine what your average weight is is actually to do a seven or 14 day weigh-in, but if you don't wanna take that much time, four days is long enough. Now that you've figured out where your average weight is, you can put that to the side. What we're going to do next is calculate our average calorie intake. And to calculate your average calories, you're gonna take your daily calories and you're going to add them up and then divide by the number of days that you tracked them for. If you tracked for four days, you would take that total number, divide by four. If you tracked for seven days, you're gonna take that total number and divide by seven. Now for this scenario, I'm going to give you some simple numbers so you can follow along and calculate your own calories and your macros. Let's say in this scenario, you weigh 150 pounds on average. You calculated this by summing up your daily weigh-ins and dividing that by how many days you weighed in. Let's say that your total weight for the four days after adding up the numbers is 600. You'll divide that by four and your weight is 150 pounds. Next, you have your goal. If you'd like to lose 20 pounds, you would take 150 and subtract 20 pounds and get 130 pounds. What I typically like to use when it comes to calculating your macros is to use your ideal body weight. 
This is going to be more accurate and it takes into consideration where a healthy body weight is with a range of plus or minus 10. For your ideal body weight, instead of giving you the calculation, you can easily look it up on the internet by using your weight and your sex. From here, you're going to use the ideal body weight to calculate your macros. Now let's say in this instance, you add up the calories from the days that you tracked them. The total is going to be 8,000 calories and you tracked across four days. You're going to divide 8,000 by four and this is going to give you 2,000 calories per day. This means that when you eat 2,000 calories per day, on average, your weight is 150 pounds on average. So at 150 pounds, your average calorie intake is 2,000 calories per day. Next, we're going to calculate your fat loss calories. Typically, the more aggressive you are with your fat loss calories, the less you're going to eat, the more restricted you're going to feel, and the likelihood that you're going to lose muscle mass is going to be higher. You can also lose weight slower by being less aggressive, but you may find that you get discouraged. So we want to find the sweet spot between being aggressive and also being slow and sustainable. Typically for your fat loss calories, you're going to subtract 10 to 30% from your maintenance calories. So what I mean by this is you're going to take your maintenance calories. Let's say your maintenance is 2000 calories per day. You're going to multiply that by 0 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3. This is 10%, 20% or 30%. Then you're going to take the number that you get and subtract it from the 2000. So for example, if we use a 20% calorie deficit, which is what I would suggest, you would take 2000 calories, multiply that by 0.2 and you would get 400 calories. Then you would subtract 400 calories from 2000 calories. This leaves us with 1600 calories per day. With the 1600 calories per day, you're going to eat 1600 calories in order to be in a calorie deficit. These are your fat loss calories. Next, we're going to use your ideal body weight to determine how much protein you're going to be eating per day. This is going to be a very simple number. You're going to calculate this by taking your ideal body weight, in this scenario is going to be 130 pounds, and you're going to multiply that by one. You want to have one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. The reason that I use ideal body weight is because not everyone may find themselves trying to reach an ideal body weight as their goal, and their goal weight may be different. So for example, you may weigh 200 pounds right now, you may try to lose 50 pounds and reach the goal of 150 pounds, but the ideal body weight may be 130 pounds. Well, 130 and 150 are 20 pounds different. And the protein intake would be vastly different at that point too. 130 grams of protein and 150 grams of protein are vastly different. You might think more protein is better, but more protein is going to take away from calories that you could be eating in fats and carbs, which are also necessary to intake. For this reason, I typically use ideal body weight to calculate your protein goals. So. Your ideal body weight is 130 pounds. You calculated your protein intake to be 130 grams. You're going to multiply that by four, and this is going to tell you how many calories you are eating from protein alone. 130 times four equals 520 calories. The next number that we're going to calculate is going to be your fat intake. We do want to intake a minimum amount of fat per day to preserve our hormone health. The number that we're going to use is going to be 0.35 times your ideal body weight. You can also increase this number, which is what I recommend. The reason for this is we don't want to hang out at the minimum as we adjust calories. We want to actually have some wiggle room. So I like to use 0.4 grams per pound of your ideal body weight. In this scenario, you're going to take 0.4 and you're going to multiply that by your ideal body weight, which is 130 pounds. And with that 130 pounds, you're going to get 52 grams of fat per day. Next, you're going to determine how many calories you're going to eat from fat alone. So you're going to take 52 grams, you're going to multiply that by nine, and that's going to give you 468 calories coming from fat alone. For the last step, we're going to figure out your carb intake. So we're going to take your calorie deficit number, which is 1600 calories. We're going to take your calories from protein and your calories from fat, and we're going to plug those in. We're going to subtract those from the 1600 calories and figure out how many calories are going to come from carbs. For this scenario, your fat loss calories are 1600 calories. You're going to subtract 468 calories because that's coming from fat. And then you're going to subtract 520 calories because that's coming from protein. After you take out your fat and your protein, you're going to be left with 512 calories. And this is the number of calories that you're going to get from carbs. So you're going to take the 512 calories and divide that by four, and that's going to tell you how many carbs you're going to eat per day. Now that you know your calories for fat loss and your macros being your carbs, proteins, and fat for your macro intake, you're going to follow along with this and then make adjustments as necessary. So you're going to continue to track your nutrition. You're going to try to hit those targets for carbs, proteins, and fats. Every week you're going to check on your average weight 
and your average calories and determine if the calorie intake is successful for you. If the calorie intake is successful, you will watch your average weight go down over time. If it's not successful, you would find that you would want to decrease your calorie intake more and you would do that by following, again, the steps that we went through previously. My suggestion is to wait two weeks before making any changes and be consistent for two weeks. It's easy to get off track and to think that we're not making progress due to the calorie intake when in reality it is our adherence and our consistency that is creating a mismatch in terms of weight loss and our intake. You may be somebody who finds that you're not even eating 2,000 calories per day and this is a completely different scenario for you to determine how much your calories should be for you to lose fat. This is something that I will explain in a future video so I won't go into that now in order to keep this one short and sweet but you can go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to lose fat and build muscle. If you'd like more help with your fitness journey with daily fitness and nutrition tips you can follow me on Instagram at Fitness, and I'll see you in the next one.